So Disney isn't exactly doing so hot right now. They seem to be headed towards an apocalyptic end, unless they somehow find a way to right the ship. I mean, we've had executives ousted, CEOs booted, and possibly even another crazy firing on the horizon that'll reshape one of the biggest franchises in entertainment history. Now, we've had a recession at Disney once before during the early 2000s. I mean, who could forget Chicken Little and Home on the Range and Atlantis? Actually, Atlantis is really cool. You should go check it out. Anyways, this one feels different somehow. It feels as if Disney has allowed their hubris to take over, and it has severely affected the quality outcome of their films. Whether it be Kevin Feige's ego-driven direction, or lack thereof, with the MCU, or the heartless corporate nonsense that has all but destroyed the fun spirit of Disney animation, lest we forget how Disney pretty much forgotten that Pixar exists, and then there's whatever the hell is going on at Lucasfilm, the entire thing is out of whack. And while Disney has been acting like a celebrity who has too much cash and not enough coke, Nintendo has been waiting silently in the bushes, like paparazzi for their first moment to strike. And now is no better time. With the Mario movie poised to do well over a billion dollars, Nintendo will at long last usurp Disney in the family entertainment genre. Ironically enough, Nintendo didn't have to do much, just watch and wait is really what they did. All the damage was done from the inside out. And it's funny because Nintendo has always been in the shadow of Disney. Gaming has long been regarded as a niche community, something reserved for loners and weirdos and nerds in the eyes of Disney and, well, the rest of pop culture in general. But quietly, Nintendo has been proving them wrong by trying to make their games as fun and accessible as possible. Drawing in the family audience who flees the burning building that is Disney right now. Slowly building up clout until the right opportunity to strike. And with Disney now doing some really polarizing moves, Nintendo saw their opportunity. And I believe will bring down Disney in one fell swoop. Not only is Mario a household name right now, but Peach soon to be. And Bowser and Toad. How did this come to being? Simple. Politics. Disney abandoned the simple premise of just giving audiences fun narratives that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. All traded for highly divisive, politically charged narratives that often discourage the fan base. All to deliver the message. Problem being, the audience didn't want anything to do with these things, so they revolted. But Disney pushed back, and back and forth we went. That is, until apathy finally kicked in mainstream audiences abandoned hope that modern Disney would right the ship. So they jumped off, and rightfully so. Now why would Disney do such a boneheaded move? Well, it has a lot to do with ESG, BlackRock, and shareholders, but it's a bit convoluted. In order for companies to get shareholders to invest in their company stock value, they have to do what's called ESG, or Environmental Social Governance. It's essentially a framework telling you that you're doing good in the community, or whatever. Most of which comes from BlackRock, which ironically owns more than 20% of Disney right now, so, so yeah. But Nintendo has seen the failures of Disney and all this ESG crap and swooped in with the Mario movie, promising a fun, non-political romp with good old-fashioned storytelling and messages of family and love. You know, things the normal audiences want to see. Not to mention, they might be launching their own cinematic universe to compete and possibly overtake the MCU as the dominating force to be reckoned with. And for the first time in their life, Disney will be at the ground, looking up at Nintendo, wondering just how they did it. And that is the reality that did them in. Disney was so caught up in what was going on in the Twitterverse, so afraid of being cancelled, that they didn't bother to go out and see what their loyal audience wants, you know, the normal people who don't give a shit about Twitter. And these people just want simple, fun, non-political. And that's what Nintendo excels at. Sure, Nintendo has done their own series of boneheaded moves, but they often immediately course correct. They know their main audience is what's keeping them in business, so they seek to please them at all costs. They don't give a damn about ESG or BlackRock. They only want to give their audience one hell of a fun ride. I only hope that Disney will realize this. Contrary to all my critiques of Disney, I actually really want to see them succeed. And it has been heart-wrenching to see them fall from their grace. 
especially after the quick resurgence in the 2010s. I, of course, I can't forget that Disney during the 90s was some of the inspiration for many young adults such as myself. And that was because of the fun, heartwarming narratives they delivered regularly. So it personally hurts to see them screwing themselves over and over and over. And it's even harder when the fix is just so easy. Yet they just don't seem to understand or care. You see, I only want the best for the Mouse House. I just wish that Bob Iger sees the wreck that is modern Disney and hopefully fixes it. But that's my thought on the Disney situation. I really do think Nintendo has leapfrogged Disney. I mean, the writing's on the wall. You look at the Mario movie and that's like one of the most anticipated movies right now. And who gives a crap about The Little Mermaid or Peter Pan and Wendy or whatever the hell else adaptation that they have coming? But that's just my opinions. I want to hear what you guys have to think. So hit me up in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you liked this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.